Okay, so I've got some questions here I'm going to try to answer. And what is it? Where would I connect the neural map on an AI standard material? Um, so, if we look over here, if I make some kind of quick object here, I'm going to create a cube. Is it F? Remember, my grid is just really, really big because of how I set up my display in the grid. I always make mine set up for real world, so that's why it looks really big. Anyway, I'm just going to go and hit F and frame this. <coughs> and I'm going to assign a fresh AI standard material. And when I look down here, where you put a normal map is in the bump map section. Okay, and when you go over here and you go to bump map and you hit this and you go, okay, I'm going to find a, a file texture and I've got a bunch of V-Ray crap in here, uh, file texture. Okay, and right here, let's take a look at what this looks like in the hypershade. I'm just going to move this thing over. Let's make it smaller so it's easier to look at. And I'll just kind of hit uh, this. There we go. And <clears throat> so there's my Arnold standard surface. And down here it's hooked into something called the normal camera, which is your bump map. Okay. And it's gone and it's created this bump 2D node. And there's my file texture, whatever that is. And it's set up to use as bump. And you got to switch it to tangent space normals to use a normal map. And remember, um, a bump map is just a black and white image and the white areas are pushing up and the black areas are pushing back or they're receding so it gives the surface some kind of texture and so maybe uh, <coughs> and, and then uh, I should mention that the normal map has uh, a different map associated with different kind of variation of your surface with the red, green, and blue channels, which are your X, Y, and Z axes in your viewport here. It's almost like i got to make another video on this one um, so that I can show the difference between the three. <clears throat> Maybe I'll do that afterwards, but that's what's going on. And so a normal map usually looks bluish in nature, okay? And it's because of red, green, and blue being mixed together, and blue is primarily your Z axis, so the axis facing towards the camera. Um, and here, let's just for fun, let's get rid of this for a minute. And by the way, the bump map is kind of, it's connected towards your camera normal. It's how your uh, camera is oriented with your object. And <clears throat> I'm just gonna grab the bump map here and let's put on something like, uh, let's see if you can find noise. Okay, and actually I'm just going to take this and I'll just quickly do something in the UVs, UV editor, and the noise is looking like that. I'm just going to hit it with uh, unitize so it's equal on all, all faces here. And let's just go to Arnold, render. Got nothing because I need a light. Come on. And whenever I do these demos, my computer slows down when I'm rendering and demoing at the same time. There we go. Anyway, <clears throat> so now I've got a bump map on here. And something else to remember, just got to zoom out a little bit. Everything starts to lag when I do this. Okay. Um, come on. Come on. And let's see what we got here. I'm just going to go over and see if I can quickly grab the bump 2D node. Now switching from bump to normal won't do anything really. I don't think it actually shouldn't. Eh, yeah, it shouldn't. It's not going to work together. Anyway, let's go back here. Um, something I do notice is the bump depth. When you're using a bump map, you can affect it. And typically, here, let's just stop this. It's driving me nuts. Um, when I'm in Maya and I put one of these on, I always drop it to point one immediately. And here, let's see what that looks like. Okay. And so this noise map is giving the illusion that there's kind of texture on the surface. And, um, okay, gamma, let's stop this. Okay, so it's giving the illusion there's texture on the surface, whereas if I look up here in the standard surface shader group, so there's this material, there's your material or your shader, and I have the shader group, and I can find it right here, SG shader group. 
There's your surface material, and there's your displacement material. That's where you hook up your displacement map. Okay, and if I go in here and let's pick something a little different. Um, actually, no, you know what? Let's just keep them the same. Um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go down here and I'll break this connection. <coughs> and actually, let's just get rid of that thing. I'm just going to delete it. And I'm going to bring this up. And I'm going to hook up this noise map as a displacement material. And I'll hit render. And so suddenly things kind of explode. So now geometry is getting pushed around. Okay, and I can't really see anything. Um, there's a the displacement shader. Okay, let's stop that. Stop. Come on, there we go. Um, displacement shader creates, or the when I plug it into the displacement app, it creates a displacement shader node. This thing um, is. Let's see, you don't really do much to it typically. There's there's a couple things you might want to look at. If I open up this Arnold section here, there is a connection to the pump map. So what it will do is if it can't render it, it will automatically convert it to a pump map. And you can kind of see the squares around here. There's really no displacement going on, except that it's pushed out in all directions a little bit. If I turn off the auto bump, when I render, you see now we get nothing. Just So the surface is just being pushed around by this map, but there's not enough geometry to support it. Just gonna hit escape. Got stop, stop. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so let's take a look here at this object. And if I grab the shape node of this, there's an Arnold section on this. And I can scrub my way down here. Okay, a bunch of uh, primary visibility things. If I go to subdivision, now subdivision says none. There's also displacement attributes here. Okay. And there's that auto bump thing. So this is the same as that thing that's on displacement shader. Okay, enable auto bump. Um, I'm going to leave that off. <coughs> and uh, let's go in and just put on some subdivisions. So what's going to happen is this, this geometry is going to smooth at the time of rendering, and it's going to push it around. So there. And we're getting something a little bit wacky looking. Still not enough. This is one subdivision, so that's going to divide it into four faces essentially. So let's take this and I'm going to go to four. <coughs> Actually, still not enough. We'll see how this is going to affect my render time. There, I just went up to six. And now we're seeing this is going crazy over here. Okay, the surface is pushing out in all directions. I'll zoom out a bit more. And we can see that it's actually disturbing the surface. We can see silhouette changes and things like that. That's the displacement map going. Um, and with the displacement map, there's a few different places you can control this. Um, I might go to say the height here. And I'm gonna stop this for a second. Come on, stop. And I'm gonna take the height. Let's put the height down to 0.1. And you still see this isn't totally complete, so I might actually put up to 7. I'm going to hit render again. And as soon as I put the height to, to point 0.1, so it only comes out, you know, 10% of what this map is pushing for. Okay. <clears throat> um, also, currently, as this is uh, being smooth because of the Cat Clark thing here, it's going, uh, if I press 3 right now, it'll round out. That's why we're getting a round shape. Uh oh. I might be smoothing it too much. But you can actually, when I did that, you can actually see a little bit of these edges in here from the original shape. Um, and what else do I show, show about this? So that's where I can control it. Sometimes you'll hear displacement maps referred to as height maps, and sometimes bump maps get called height maps, which makes this very confusing. But displacement maps push around geometry, they smooth out your mesh, they push around geometry, and the bump maps are an optical illusion. Okay, where it just looks noisy on the surface. Uh, sometimes, actually I'm going to save that for another video. I hope that kind of explains it. And like I said, normal maps are bump, they're basically bump maps on steroids. Okay, and let's go back to these questions. Also, okay, so I just did that. Um, the roughness material. Okay, so 
the roughness material. This is a wonderful thing that uh, you get from Substance, the roughness maps. And uh, if you look old school, uh, here I'm just going to hit one on this thing. Let's stop the render. Um, let's go to this. I'm going to turn off the Cat Clark mail, speed things up. And let's use, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and delete that thing. And for fun, Look on the AI standard surface, go to the specular. Okay, old school, this used to be called specular, but now we've got this new term, roughness. And if I go in and I plug in my noise map into the roughness when I render, okay, let's see if we can see it. It's gonna be hard to see with uh, this flat white background light here. I think I'm gonna pause for a second. Let's pause that render. I'm just going to get rid of this thing. Actually, I'll keep the video rolling as I'm doing this. Lights, area light. And my area light's sitting down here. <clears throat> I'm just going to go quickly to panels, look through selected. And there, I'm just going to aim it. And I'll just take my exposure and I just knock it up to 10 right away. Hit the render again. There we go, so I'm zooming out. And we're seeing that kind of same illusion on the surface again, but, come on. I gotta, I gotta find a way to quickly move the light, so I'm gonna go back to the perspective view. And let's see, my light's here, it's almost on the same level as the camera, so it's hard to see um, the roughness. Okay, it's when I put it onto a, an angle whoop, that I'm gonna start to notice some changes a bit more, like you can see it for sure, right here. Okay, <clears throat> what's going on is it's shinier in some areas than others. So this gray area here is where it's not as shiny. Okay, and if I select this thing and I go over here, and render times are going slow. Um, AOR, actually, what if I do this? That could become more obvious too, but put up the metalness. So the metalness, we see more shine and more reflectivity on the white areas, okay? And this is because the, the light's up here and it's kind of bouncing off. So as I zoom out, where are we? I'm just trying to see if I can, there it is right there. So as soon as that's on an angle, I see it, okay? And actually maybe just for fun, how about this? I do something crazy and I grab the hyper shade again. And at the same time that I have a spec map on, <clears throat> I'm gonna hook this noise up as a bump at the same time. So I'm just gonna middle click, drop on the word bump. And I know this is gonna look ugly, but now we're getting the two kind of mixing together. And uh, let's put the bump value down to 0 0.1. Point to when. Okay, I could even go lower than that, I suspect. Let's try this 0 0.01. There. And now you can kind of see the two of them mixing together. I'll get this kind of shiny area when I rotate around. Okay, go, go, go away. There we go. Um, and is this thing off? Looks like it got unhappy with me, so I'm just going to close it and I'm going to go back here to Arnold, render. It takes a second and it kicks in again. And now we'll see shiny areas and we'll see not so shiny areas. And actually my noise map, you're starting to see all these weird little blobs on here. If I go to the noise. Uh, okay, noise. And <clears throat> of course, it just decided to show me something else. There we go. And uh, noise frequency is kind of low, uh, max, Depth max is three, so if I go on and crank this up to say five, we should get a noisier bit of noise here. So I get rid of those weird blobs that are all over here. Okay, and I'm gonna stop this one here. What time are we at? 14 minute mark. Okay, so next question. I hope that's answering these. Is it possible to extract higher solutions in ZBrush as displaced and mouse and mouse connected? Uh, Okay, so you want a lower, mod, uh, lower, lower poly model. Now, <clears throat> when I look at the ZBrush file I got, 
Okay, so first off, if you put symmetry on, you'll notice the symmetry isn't working. Okay, and uh, that's because the model is not in the center. And it's really, really small over here, but there's some issues with it. So uh, let's go and take a look at this. So there's some other parts here and things like that. The top piece needs to be symmetrical in Maya. Um, not sure where I'm getting a weird double double thing here, but I'll find out in a minute. <coughs> and how many polys are we looking at? We're looking at 35 million, or no, uh, 3.5 million, sorry. And if I go down here to geometry, whoop, go down to the lowest subdivision level, I'm just going to hit F. Um, I thought I hit the lowest subdivision level. There we go. So we're at 13,000. So if I put on the poly frame here, you got a kind of a high-ish poly count. I probably have half of that. I think you can get away with less easily. It'd be easier to animate with. Um, also, things like I'd give, I change the shape of the character a bit, the volume. I'd like to have a little bit of a bend in the elbows and a bend in the knees. But before I talk, talk about that, let's just go and fix this centered problem first. So I'm going to hit export. And let's see, this is going to downloads. And let's do this and call this zero one. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go flying over into Maya. And let's get rid of this thing and this thing. And file, new scene, don't save, actually file, import. And remember, we need import to go over here. And I always like the third option. And if you're on OBJ, put on single object and your life will be better. And let's grab this and import. Well, that doesn't make sense. It's centered here. Okay, so something else must have thrown that off. Um, let's go over here. And I'm just gonna check out the center line. The center line is good. Hmm. So maybe somehow one of the other objects is throwing it off. I'm just going to hit four. Yeah, that should be fine. And it looks like it's real world size because my it's matching up with my grid. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now that I've done that, uh, is there? I just there's one other thing I checked earlier. Nope. Okay, I'm going to show that on a later one that I I have to look at another scene. Um, if I go in and let's go back here, I think those other parts are throwing it off. Um, what if I did some kind of, like, because here there's these other pieces, these are clothing pieces. Hmm. Well, let's try this. I'm going to go up to the highest subdivision level on this model. Okay, and... Okay, and then if I did something like I exported this out, and I'm going to call this for two. Okay, and then I'm going to wait a moment while it's doing that. I'm going to pause while it's doing that. Okay, so it did it, and I'm just going to grab another object here. I'm going to hit F, and this thing's just standing by itself here on the grid. And if I go and I import that object that I just exported, I just want to see if it centers itself when it comes in. And importing data mesh, this is going much faster than when I exported. Da, 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 da. <coughs> and now it's centered. Interesting. Um, and do I have the subdivision levels? I don't, they're gone. But I can go back here and I can hit reconstruct subdiv and reconstruct subdiv. I'm in the geometry section doing this, and I can bring it all the way back down to its lowest subdivision level. I thought I have to re-topologize it. And again, I feel like there's like double the amount you have here that you need. You don't need all this extra stuff. Um, when I look up here, and I hit this thing, the face is looking reasonable for the edge loops. I might go a bit further with the loops, having them loop around. Um, and anything else? If I go in, oh, this one, 
Is this where the craziness shows up? No. Um, and I should... Uh, oh, the other thing I was going to check. Pivot point. So if I go and I hit X, the symmetry is perfect now. So I'm not sure where that came from, that weird offset that's happening on this one. Uh, but I fixed it. Because here it's not showing up in the center. And sometimes that'll be like you might have had another object on top here that wasn't centered originally or something like that. Um, even when I'm here, I wonder if I hit this thing and then I do something like uh, that's just switching to the move tool and I hold down alt and I do which one is it, this one? No, alt. There we go. So now it's pinned to that dress, but if I had to grab this and I did that. Come on. There we go. So now it's centered. And does that mean that if I go back to draw, no. Almost have to refresh the whole object and then put those things on. Um, if I had this selected, and then I went over to this one. I'm just gonna see if this works. I don't know if this is gonna work. Uh, if I go into append, and I append on the dress. There, that one's working. Doesn't make sense that that works. Um, and then if I go back over here to this thing and I switch to the pants and so those are on the top subtool and then I switch to this other subtool that I've created over here and I go to append and I pop on the pants and everything's centered. Okay, that too, I don't know if that makes sense. That was magic bunny powers that that worked. Okay, so there's that. And what's the other question? The other one, if I zoom in here, um, it was about this uh, character that's being rigged. Now, problems. Some first problems I see. I kind of look, the character needs bent, or the character needs bent knees, and the knees are hyperextended kind of a little bit back, so this pivot point for this joint is back, and so it's going to create weirdness in your knee. You want bent knees, you want bent elbows. Okay, they're too straight. So before I put the rig in, I would have bent those. Just a little bit. <clears throat> uh, next thing is, I was poking around, and I noticed that when I grabbed this geometry here, that there was some extra face stuff here. Everything else is laid out quite well. The hands look a little bit strange. Um, I might have to check out their texel density or something like that, but everything else is looking good. Um, but if I zip down here, I'm like, what the hell is that? And this alerted me to a problem. It's in your mouth. So you've done something here to create new faces, but not just that, so that's all good. But then I noticed something really weird. If I hit four, you can kind of see it right there. Let's see if I can select this thing. There, and I'll deselect that. And there you can see right here, yeah. you've got two extra faces that are non-manifold geometry that are going to cause you problems. Okay, so when you try to hook up the face rig, most likely it's not going to be happy. So I delete those and hopefully uh, we check and make sure there's no weird holes in here or anything like that. Um, let's just uh, grab this whole beast and I'm going to go isolate it. Social isolation. Uh, I'm going to go and hit three and then you can see if there's anything weird here when I hit five. No, it looks like everything's fine. Okay, and I might do something like, uh, what if I grab these faces here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab <laughs> this edge, this edge, this edge, and I'm going to go and hit move and sew, so those moved and sewed into the right places, and let's grab this face and this face, and we'll leave that one out of the mix for now, and Nope. And I'll hit move and so on those ones. And <clears throat> I'm just going to go in here and grab these edges here and here. And I'll hit move and so. Those should sew together. This one here shouldn't have sewn together. I missed something here. I'll just cut that. And uh, let's go to UVs. I'm just going to grab this UV here. And I'm going to go to UVs to UVs not to UVs to UVs, I'm going to go to grow, grow. I'll just uh, do that one more time. Grow it again. I just hit G on my keyboard. 
I'll hit unfold. And that should have unfolded nicely. Let's see what happens if I unfold again. That's funny, it's doing it twice. There's something else funky right here, so I don't know what that one is. Let's uh, grow that again, just in case. Oh, and it looks like I grew across here. It shouldn't have done that. There's something that's not cut right there. Anyway, I'm just gonna unfold that, see what happens. Maybe it needs to be hit a couple of times. And strangely enough, that's fixing it. And Okay, and let's just take a look at this one shell right here. That move off fine. I'm just gonna grab this whole piece. It looks like the inside or the outside of the mouth is fine, but if I hit unfold on this, there. And that one that thing probably needs some kind of cut through the middle. Uh, something's acting a bit weird in here, so if I stare at it. I'm just gonna go in here and grab this edge, double click, and that'll give me the whole, come on you bastard, there. I'm gonna hit another scene, junction right there, and is there, oh, I hate when my computer does this. Okay, there we go. And I'll just cut that, grab the UVs, and unfold. Okay, so that one's better. Okay, so that was one weird thing to fix in here. Um, yeah, and so now I just have a bunch of history in here, so I probably have to do this thing again, because you're gonna find that the, when it's doing the face rig, it builds it up and turns it into end cloth. Okay, other thing I noticed in here that's gonna cause you problems you have, might not have hit yet. Uh, so there's some kind of face group here, but it's this geometry here for your eyes. You got your eye pieces in groups, and what I would do is these should be just under the geo group with no subgroups. And um, when you're putting the face rig on, I'll use the cornea piece, the biggest piece, as my main eye when I'm selecting and putting things in for the face rig. Um, the eyes look a little bit sunken back. This kind of looks weird right here. Um, <clears throat> and then you can uh, you can all take all these other pieces and you can bind them to the eye joints afterwards. If need be. I can make another video on that. Um, but all I need to do is find the joint that the eye is hooked up to. And actually, you know what? Let's just find it. I'm going to open up my hyper sh uh, hypergraph. And here's an evil little trick. So I just put on the advanced skeleton. If I go here to select deform joints, okay, it's going to go and select all the joints in the system. Actually, let's make sure I have nothing selected and hit it. There they are right there, I'm going to hit F. They're all right here. And when I look at this, that looks like a leg. And this looks like a hand. And maybe right here, and there's my neck. And where is the eye joint? Okay, so I don't actually see it. So there, but those are some of the joints you can bind things to afterwards if you're looking for it. Okay, let's do this then. If I grab the eyeball, this thing's already got a skin cluster on it. So let's go over here. Now this is hierarchy, and this is the hypergraph input, output connections, upstream, downstream connections. That was another old term that was used for this, and input, output connections. If I look around here, I'm looking for a joint icon, joint R. There it is. So I can take all those other pieces and bind them afterwards if I'm having issues. Okay, it is going to try to do that for you in the advanced skeleton, but uh, and then I can switch this back to hierarchy mode. And if you take a look under Windows, you'll see that General Editors, Hypergraph Hierarchy, and then Hierarchy or Hypergraph Connections. That's what I just did as I flip between the two of them with these two buttons right here. And I think that's all the questions. Um, hold on a second. So we do this. And you can tell that I was looking at a word video in the middle because it just got released. Um, uh, if I just want to make sure. This, da, 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 da. Yeah, so those are the last things you should worry about. Okay, that's it. That's my video. Done.